What's happening, Algebra 1? We are moving into a new chapter, 2.1, Writing Equations. Hey, I want to just throw out an essential question here. I'll probably have you comment on this one. Uh, this one says, why is it helpful to represent the same mathematical idea in different ways? So we've been starting to see that math can be represented, represented in multiple different ways. But why is that? Why, I want you to think about why that's helpful. Okay, and there's not just a right or wrong answer here. Um, just your opinion on it. What is? Why is it helpful? Why would it be helpful to you to see a problem uh, in multiple ways? Maybe you're a picture person, right? Maybe you're a, a chart type of person. Um, just be thinking about why that is important. Um, uh, perhaps you're thinking about, like to help you think about this, what if you were looking at like highs of a stock, like a stock in the stock market over a month period of time? Would you like to see that in just a bunch of numbers written down with commas? Um, would you like it in a chart? Would you like it in a graph? Like what would be the most useful thing to, 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 to like take a look at that data, right? So just be thinking about that while uh, we're going through this. Today, we're gonna be writing equations translating sentences into equations and vice versa. So the key to translating translating sentences into equations is definitely looking at keywords. Okay? So keywords are very important um and I think you probably know these. We've done a lot of them actually in chapter 1, so this is kind of a review. But let's look at a couple keywords. So is is the first one I want to look at. Is indicates where an equal sign goes. So here's an example. The product of 2 and a number is 12. Okay, so product of 2 and a number is, is represents equals, is 12. Okay, we don't say is equal to, we just say is. All right, so is means equals, essentially. And then for sum, um, sum and plus, these are both uh, names for addition. Right, where we add things together, the sum of three and a number. So three plus some number is 10, uh, which is, means equals 10, right? And then product and times, this is ways of saying multiplication. So we multiply the product of two numbers or two and a number is equal to the sum of four and 10. Um, the product of two and a number means two times a number, right? And then quotient, quotient means divide. Uh, order definitely matters with quotients. Okay, the first number is always on top. So this is important, you guys. Okay, because this is one that a lot of students miss. So it says the quotient of a number and 10 is 2. So whenever you see the quotient of something, the first number that's given is always on the top. Okay, so you think of this as a fraction, right? Like a fraction is just a way of dividing. Right, so here the first number is a variable. So we would say x, and then the second number is 10. So x over 10 equals 2, right? The other way you could write that is x divided by 10 equals 2, right? Um, but typically we're moving more to these fractions when we're in algebra. Then the difference, this is order important as well. Whenever you subtract uh, something or you use the word difference, it is a subtraction uh, um, that we are doing. We also have the words less than, right? Um, so it says whenever it says the difference of something and something else, the first term will always come first. So the difference of 5 and k is 1. So the first term is first. 5 minus k equals 1. All right. Um, so that's all I'll say about that for now. Let's look at the less than and decreased by. So we subtract whenever it says blank less than something else, right? So um, a number less than 20 is equal to 3. So a number less than 20. If it says less than like that, then we start with 20, right? Because it's some number that's less than that. So we'd say 20 minus that number equals 3. So it's important to to know the difference in all of these. Decreased by, so if I said a number decreased by 20 is equal to 3, it means the same thing. 
right? Decrease by, so some number, uh, sorry, it doesn't mean the same thing. Uh, if I said a number decreased by 20 is equal to 3, then it would be a number decreased by 20 equals 3. So notice how less than and decreased by change the order here, and order is very important. Okay, so just be mindful of that, you guys. Uh, a number less than something, make sure that the second thing comes first. If it says decreased by... Uh, then the order just stays the same, okay? So example one says 2 plus the quotient 2 plus the quotient of a number, so we'll call that x and 8, is the same as 16. There you go. Okay. Oh, I guess I did it for you here on the next slide. That's cool. And then for 1b, it says 27 times k is h squared decreased by 9. So try that one out. This says 27 times k. So 27k is equals h squared decreased by 9. Okay? That's how you would do 1b. Um, for example 2... Let's look at this one. It says there are 40 members in the Florida Senate. This is 80 fewer than the number in the Florida House. How many members are in the Florida House? Write an equation and then solve it. Okay, so uh, we know there's 40 members in the Florida Senate, and then we know there's 80 fewer than the number in, this, in, in, in the Florida House. Okay, so uh, we can represent that with, I don't know, whatever you want to whatever letter you want, you can use an X or whatever you want. So we can say that 40 is equal to X minus 80. You can use whatever letter you want, but um, notice because it says this is 80 fewer than the number in the Florida house. Okay, so basically Senate is equal to a certain statement about the house. Right, And so if we say Senate, there's 40 in the Senate, then the House is represented by X minus 80, right? Because there's 80 fewer in the House. So for here, if we wanted to solve this, uh, we would have to add 80 to both sides, and we would have X is equal to 120. Okay, so there's 120 uh, uh, people in the House at, for Florida, and then there are 40 in the Senate. Okay, example three. In a right triangle, the, the square of the measure of the hypotenuse C, the square of that, is equal to, equals, the sum of the squares of the measures of the legs A and B. Okay, so we'll call them A squared, these are squares, plus B squared. Okay, this is a very famous um, theorem called the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we use a ton in geometry next year. So C is always your hypotenuse, and then A and B can be interchanged, but they are the legs of your triangle. This is the right tri the right angle in your triangle, and this says that this squared plus this squared always equals this squared. Okay, so that's example three. Example four, they want you to write a verbal now for the algebraic. So here I would say 15 is um, 25 uh, times a number squared plus 2. Could have done that a number of different ways. I might have even done a different one here. 15 is equal to the product of 25 and u squared plus 2. That works as well. Um, there's a number of different possibilities that you could do for this, but just make sure that if you read it back and somebody else reads it back and then creates their, uh, their equation from your writing, like maybe try it out on a parent or a friend, say, hey, write this thing out and see if they write out this. Okay, and if they do, chances are you, you did a good job. Okay, 4B, <clears throat> for this one, uh, we have 
uh, well, we can say that that's three halves, or you could talk about a quotient there, but I would just say uh, we have three halves, three halves times r minus t cubed is 100, uh, 30. Two. Okay, so they just want you to write out a verbal. Uh, oh, look, I did it for you right there. And then, is there one more that we want to do here? Uh, this is just an extra example, I think, that I gave you guys. So uh, you could take a look at that, but I'm not going to go over it. I'm going to keep the video shorter. So guys, that's it for today. Your homework should be on a homework sheet, and uh, we will see you in class.